This video is going to look at examples of problems involving linear equations. First example, a salesperson receives a base salary of $35,000 and a commission of 12% of the total sales for the year. Write a linear model that shows the salesperson's total income I based on total sales of K dollars. Now, one thing to note, in most linear and exponential problems, we will assign the variable letters that we want used. In this case, it is I and K. Please use the letters that are assigned. You will lose points if you use the generic X and Y. We want the variables to be very representative of what they are representing. So we want to write our linear model. And this problem is nice because it gives us our initial value. It tells us that the person receives $35,000. And then it also tells us the change. In this case, it's 12% of the total sales for the year. So we don't really need to do any math for this one. We can just write down the linear equation saying that the income is going to be equal to the base amount, which is $35,000, plus 12%, which is 0.112, of the total sales, which was K. So in this case, they gave us our initial value of $35,000 and our slope where you get 12% of your sales each year. So we could write our linear function automatically. We didn't need to do any math. And traditionally, we write our linear functions with the slope first and then the y-intercept. But it really doesn't matter what order you have them in as long as you've got your slope and your y-intercept. So then the first question says, if the salesperson sells $250,000 worth of merchandise, what is her total income for the year, including that base salary? So in this case, we are given how much is being sold. Our variable K represents the amount that is being sold. So we can just plug $250,000 in for K. So we can say that her total sales will be 12% of the $250,000 plus her base salary of $35,000. So this salesperson's yearly income selling $250,000 worth of merchandise is going to be $65,000. This next one says, if the salesperson wants to earn $100,000 in a year, how much does she need to sell? Well, in this one, they give us the $100,000, which represents the income. So we need to put that in place of the I in the equation. So we would have $100,000 is equal to 0.112K plus 35 thousand dollars and we're going to need to solve this equation for k so for now we're going to do this by hand a little bit later on in this unit i'll show you a way using goal seek that excel could solve the equation for you but to solve this two-step equation we need to start by subtracting thirty-five thousand dollars from both sides so if we take our one hundred thousand minus thirty-five thousand dollars that gives us sixty-five thousand so i'm just going to go over here to say that now we have our equation to be sixty-five thousand is equal to 0.12k. So now to get k all by itself, which represents the number of cells that she needs to make, we need to divide the 65,000 by 0.12. So k is going to be equal to $65,000 divided by 0.12. So this salesperson needs to sell $541,666.67 worth of merchandise if she wants to earn $100,000 for the year. All right, next example. This one is looking at some plants. So it says Luke is tracking the progress of his plant's growth. Today the plant is five centimeters high. The plant grows 1.5 centimeters per day. We want to write a linear model that represents the height of the plant H after D days. So again, be careful with the variables. We want to use what is given in the problem. This is another problem that's relatively straightforward. They tell us the initial value, which is five centimeters high, and then they tell us how it's changing each day, which is 1.5 centimeters per day. So we can just write down this linear equation directly, saying that our height is going to be equal to the fact that it grows 1.5 centimeters each day, and then its initial value is five. So in the slope intercept form, we see that our slope is that's rising 1.5 centimeters per day, and the y-intercept, which is our initial value, is that it started at five centimeters. So the next question is, when will the plant be 15 centimeters tall? Well, this is giving us the height of the plant. We need to put it in for H. So we have 15 is equal to 1.5D plus 5. And for now, we're going to solve this by hand. So we'll subtract 5 from both sides to get 10 is equal to 1.5D. And then to get D all by itself, which represents the number of days, we will take our 10 and divide it by 1.5. So we see in 6.66 
days per plant will be 15 centimeters tall. And always round your answers to two decimal places on the test. So the next part of this question says, what will the height of the plant be after 20 days? So 20 days is the number of days. We're going to put that in for D. So this one we can just plug in. We can say it's growing 1.5 centimeters per day for 20 days plus our initial height of 5. So after 20 days, this plant will be 35 centimeters high. All right, next example. The math department sponsors a family fun or math family fun night each year. In the first year, there were 35 participants. In the third year, there were 57 participants. We want to write an equation to predict how many participants P there will be at any given year Y. So this one's a little bit different. Instead of giving us the slope and the y-intercept, it gives us two pairs of points. It gives us the pair of points in the first year we had 35 participants, and then it also gives us the pair of points in the third year there were 57 participants. So from these two pairs of points, we need to find our slope and then find our y-intercept. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I believe your book walks you through how to do it by hand, which is great. You probably saw it that way back in high school. And if you want to do it by hand, you are more than welcome to do so. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use Excel to shortcut the process a little bit. And on the test, you're welcome to do it by hand or you're welcome to do it this way in Excel. So to do this in Excel, we're going to put our variables in. So our first variable is our year. And then our second variable is our participants. And I put year first because that is our X variable, or our input. Then when the um, family fun night first starts, probably not a lot of people know about it. But as it goes on for a couple years, more people hear about it and want to come. So the longer the math department does this, the more momentum they're going to build and the more people that are probably going to be there. So our, the year is going to determine the number of participants. So when I put in my data, the first year I have 35 participants. And then the third year, I had 57 participants. What we can do is create a scatter plot in Excel. So if I create the scatter plot, if I highlight my data, insert the scatter plot with just the dots, no markers, we see something really interesting here. I'm trying to get it so we can see. So in the scatter plot, if you notice, this first point is way down here close to zero. It looks like it's at one. That's not up at 35. And then this other one starting at like 35 and is up here in the 57. What happened is Excel can't read your data if you put it in in columns. And I did it this way just to show you that it's not going to work if you do it in columns. It puts the data at the wrong spot. It's saying the first data point's 1, 3, and the second one's 35, 57, which is not what we're working with. So instead of putting it in columns, what we need to do, just erase all of this, what we need to do is actually put it in in rows. So we need to put in our first row the fact that there was, in year one, there were 35, and then in year three, there were 57. So if you put your data in going in rows, now when we highlight our data, insert scatter plot, now we see that our data is correct. The first year we've got 37 people, and then, or 35 people, and then the second year we had 57. So you see that the data actually looks correct. So always put your data in, in rows. And um, if we want to clean up our graph, we can change the chart layout. Let's see, quick layout's what I want. If I change it to that very first quick layout, I can put in axis titles and labels showing the year, the participants, and then this can be our fun night. And then I usually click where it says series one and hit the delete button on my keyboard because we don't really need the extra label. And so now we have a nice pretty scatter plot. So to get our linear equation from here, what you do is you right click on one of the data points and then add trend line. Trend line is what Excel calls a model for the data. So add trend line and then we want it to be the linear. We want it to display the equation and you can have it display R squared if you want to. We'll talk about R squared more in the next video. But once we have our equation, this gives us our linear model. So we see our linear model, see the number of participants is equal to 11 times the number of years plus 24. So this is saying that initially, there were 24 people at Family Fun Night, and each year, 11 more people attend. So if we wanted to figure out how many participants there will be for the fifth year, 
Well, the fifth year that represents y. We can plug that into the equation for y. So that's 11 times 5 plus 24. So in the fifth year, there will be 79 participants. We wanted to know when will there be 150 participants. Well, 150 participants, that's p. That represents the number of people there. So we'll have 150 equals 11y plus 24. And we're going to have to solve this for y. So if we subtract 24 from both sides, I believe that gives us 126 equal to 11y. And then to get y all by itself, we need to take 126 and divide it by 11. So in 11.45 years, there will be 150 participants. And again, please leave your answer to two decimal places. Do not round it to the nearest year. Everything on the test or an assignment needs to be rounded to two decimal places. All right, last example. Suppose a five-minute overseas call costs $5.91 and a 10-minute call costs $10.86. The cost of the call and the length of the call are related. The cost of each minute is constant. So it's telling us that because there's a constant charge per minute, this is a linear function. So it's, it's grown by a steady amount for every minute. So we want to know what is the cost C of a call M minutes in duration. So this is another one where they give us two points instead of giving us the slope and the y-intercept. So our points, if we talk for 10 minutes, it's costing us $5.91. And then our second point is if we talk for, oh, I did that wrong. We talk for five minutes, it's costing us $5.91. And if we talk for 10 minutes, it's costing us $10.86. So those are our two points. The amount of time we talk determines how much it costs us. So again, we're going to do this one in Excel, creating that trend line. So I'm going to put the minutes and then the cost. Remember, you want these to go across. You don't want them going in columns. Like I showed you on the last one, it makes Excel get all weird on us. I don't know why Excel gets weird, but it does. So we highlight our data, insert our scatter plot. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just so I can see more stuff on my screen. I'm going to change my quick layout to the first one. So I have places to title and label. So this is minutes, cost, overseas call, just something so that we know what it represents. And we can see it's telling us the $5 call costs just under six minutes. The 10 minute call costs between 10 and, 11, or 10 and 12 minutes. So to get our linear model, we right click on one of the points, add trend line. We want the linear, we want it to display the equation, display R squared. Again, we'll talk about R squared in a future video. So we see that the cost is going to be equal to basically 99 cents a minute plus an initial charge of 96 cents. So it costs 96 cents to make the connection and then 99 cents a minute. So how long can we talk if we have $12 to spend? Well, $12, that's cost, that represents C. So we need to say that 12 equals 0.99M plus 0.96. If we subtract 0.96 from both sides, that gives us what 11.04 is equal to 0.99M. So to get the number of minutes, we need to say that minutes will be equal to 11.04 divided by 0.99. So we can talk for just over 11 minutes if we have $12 to spend on this phone call. And then our last example, how much will a 20 minute call cost? So 20 minutes, that's our M variable. So that's going to be 0.99 times 20 plus 0.96. So it will cost us $20.76 if we want to make a 20-minute 